I want to share with you my fantastic way to do color wheels because technically I hate color wheels. I think they're fine for an assessment when a student needs to prove their understanding of color mixtures, but I don't like doing it as a project because students get bored very easily and it isn't expressive. I don't want to spend two weeks on them doing something that they're not really into, so to speak. But I came across this artist, Sarah Morris, who does these wonderful um, patterns and they're based on origami fold patterns. So if you take a piece of origami and unfold it, you will find a lot of geometry in there. And whenever you can take a space and divide it up into many other spaces, smaller shapes, there's an application there that you can use the color wheel information to create an interesting work of art. So what I had my students do is um, I just cut up some copy paper into squares and we spent three days uh, watching videos and they would um, tie it to what it is they were interested in. So if the student had you know, a few cats at home, they could find out how to do an origami cat. If they liked to cook, they could do an origami spoon, an origami knife, an origami strawberry, or whatever. Um, if the student was into sports, you know, you could do uh, the paper balloon that could represent a ball or a basketball. But essentially, the students drove their own explorations of origami using YouTube. And I had some books available to them. And before we even began, I asked students to raise their hands about, and show me who had done origami before. Those became my classroom resources. So any student who struggled with the origami um, was able to kind of call on them for help. And I was able to help them too, because I have a pretty strong background in origami. So it was pretty independent. And students would fold different things. And this is a dragon that I invented. Um, and I decided I was going to use this as my example. Once they um, get a figure that they're happy with, then we need to unfold it and count how many shapes there are. Um, I found that the sweet spot for this particular project is between 30 and 50 spaces. If it's much lower than that, um, it becomes too simple. If it's much more than that, it'll take them a year to finish this project. So about 30 to 50 seems to be the sweet spot. And then we put a spotlight in the room and we photographed our paper. And the idea of this uh, is that you can easily see light and dark when you photograph it and print it in black and white. This will become helpful later on as I explain. And then what I had students do is they're going to go ahead and label it um, light, medium, and dark. So all of the, um, the dark shapes, they put a D on. All the light ones, they put an L on. And everything else got an M for medium. Um, this will help with one of the tangents for this particular project. Because once you, um, once you have your space divided, you could have students do one corner starting with red, another corner starting with yellow, another corner with blue, and then I have them choose black or white for the other corner. And then as they go into spaces between those corners, they can color those mixtures. So between red and yellow, we'll have different kinds of oranges. And then they can add in a little bit of black or white to vary the tone uh, of that. So you can create a color wheel that way. Um, and I, I think that's the easiest approach for students. But for those who like to push themselves a little bit further, that's when they can use this light and dark. So now when they look at their, um, their colors, they're thinking, well, the lightest that they have is yellow. So that the spaces that are all light will have different hues of yellow and maybe adding in uh, white. And then as they get to darker, maybe that's going to be purple um, or a dark blue. And then the mediums might be your reds and oranges and um, lavenders and things like that. So you can get the illusion of shadow on a two-dimensional surface by using this as a resource. This is harder for students to do, but I give them the option that they can either do it as just a color wheel and blend the colors that are in between the spaces, or they can start to think of the value of colors, and then we get this illusion of three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. It's a little harder to do, but I think my advanced students really appreciate that. So how do we get to the actual painting? Well, um, we have canvas available, and what I do 
is I, I have students do a larger origami the size of my canvas. So this is 12 by 12 inches. Um, you can get 16 by 16 fairly easily, um, but 12 by 12 works really good. So I cut paper 12 by 12, and then the students refold their creature, open it up, and we tape that onto a canvas board. And then I use carbon paper inside, and they use rulers and a ballpoint pen and start tracing the lines through. And that's how we get it onto the canvas. And I'm not quite done with this one, but I'll continue on through there. Then we can start to uh, approach the coloring part of it. So I give my students their primary colors, plus black and white and then they choose the direction they want to go. If they want to work with the idea of just the hues and doing the color wheel, that's fine. They get the experience that they need. And if those want to push the idea of value, um, and maybe if I had an advanced class, I would just have them do that, where they're thinking about the lightness or darkness of a hue and then using that to color in their spaces. So this has been um, a fun exploration. My students are doing it right now. And if you want to see some finished products, I'll be putting them on my blog at arteduguru.com. I'll have a link in the description below. If you find this interesting, definitely follow along with my blog. You know, hit the subscribe button and you can find some other things that I'm doing. Um, I also have resources available, like the backs of my students' books. Um, they have a color wheel on there, so doing a color wheel project, you know, just a strict color wheel doesn't make sense to me because they, they have resources. We have posters on the wall. Why do they have to redo a poster? But this way they're creating a creative work of art. We're tying it to a contemporary artist, Sarah Morris, and having a lot of fun in the process. And then we can make some extra connections and maybe I'm gonna have my students use protractors and measure a few obtuse angles, acute angles, putting that on there so we can display this next to the projects and they're learning a little bit of extra in the geometry uh, portion of this project. So there are lots of ways of expanding on student knowledge with this and I hope you enjoy the project. Thank you so much and have a great day.